Well, here we are for part 2A of module 5 software and apps. So in this video, I'm going to cover the basics of a common productivity suite. What is a productivity suite? Who makes them? Why would we use them? We're going to look at the basics of word processing and spreadsheets. Now, remember, folks, this isn't a how to. This is an overview of what the heck is word processing and what the heck do I do with spreadsheet software? So let's talk about productivity suites, uh, versions to install on the computer, mobile, run in the cloud, etc. When we talk about a productivity suite, we're talking about a suite of software that is designed to allow you different features and functionalities that are common in computing systems. Now, right off the bat, you might think of Office 365. Now, with Office 365, we're given an online version of a word processor, Microsoft Word. We'll look at that in more detail. Um, that's a productivity suite. It usually comes with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook for email, etc. Okay. That is a productivity suite. Now, let's just not get wrapped around those common productivity suites that give us a word processor, a way to manage numbers and spreadsheets, maybe a small database, and some means of presenting presentations. Because we could think of Adobe's productivity suite as it pertains to um, the ability, we're given one application that's all about editing photos, we're given another application that's all about designing things for the web and animations, we're given another that allows us to literally create feature length movies using video editing software. So keep that in mind. Some are free, some require a purchase or a license, that is true. Uh, example of free is through a Gmail account, you can get a productivity suite the Google Productivity Suite. Now, they've also taken that past where you can get a license for their advanced productivity suite with more features, more functionalities um, called G Suite, okay, or Google Suite. So, store documents in the cloud allows you to collaborate. That's just sort of a add-on. The fact is we can store docs locally. We can store documents in the cloud in a storage. We can store documents in a place and then share them interactively with other people. So looking at common productivity suites, I mentioned Microsoft Office 365. So it includes Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Outlook for email. Microsoft OneNote, which is pretty cool, especially if you have a digital tablet for just taking notes and then converting it to text and then access for databases. Now, when we get into Apple, Apple has a productivity suite as well, you know, for word processor, um, spreadsheet for numbers and so on, you know, in presentations, you know, iWork, iWork for the cloud integrates with Apple's iCloud for you to save apps there. I mentioned G Suite. It again is, first of all, it's available for Chrome OS, but let's also remember it's available to run in any browser. Now, notice there are some companies here that have browsers as well, like Microsoft. So I'm sure it wouldn't surprise you that the most functionality, features, and reliability for Microsoft's Office 365 productivity online suite is going to run best as Internet Explorer, where the G Suite is going to run best in Google Chrome. Okay, so not only can we run it in Google Chrome OS, but we can run it in Google, um, the Chrome browser. We can run it on Android. We can run it on iOS, you know, different custom apps developed for the different platforms. Okay, and it includes things like Google Calendar, Gmail for your email, Docs for word processing, Sheets for uh, ex Excel spreadsheets um, <laughs> for, and then slides for presentations, and then SketchUp for sketching. And by the way, there's also some really great tools for creating some automated forms that populate back to their sheets so that you can have people fill out forms and get the data all in one place. Um, and finally, there's Apache Open Office. So here's the cool thing. Office 365, there's a charge. Apple, there's obviously a charge. G Suite, there's really no charge for the basics. Um, however, if you want advanced functionality, you buy an end user license agreement. And then Apache is overall free. Okay, so open Office. <laughs> Popular productivity suites, well, we just went over them. You know, Word Processor, Microsoft Word, Pages in Apple, Docs in G Suite, and Writer in open office. So these are what they're talking about. I would suggest that you pause this video real quick, 
take a quick look at this. You know, there's our cloud storage again. So notice how Microsoft Office uses Microsoft OneDrive. So I can literally make that my default saving place and it'll save all the documents up to the OneDrive. The reason why this is important, folks, is today when we buy a computer, we don't have to buy it with a terabyte SSD. We could buy it with a 256 gig SSD knowing that we're gonna save our files up to the cloud, okay? So we can save some cost on purchasing computers by doing that. So as we talk about more details on what we use word processing for, well, this has really changed. It used to be just letters. I'm gonna give you some examples here in a minute of just some amazing documents we can create. Because Microsoft also has a program called Publisher, and that's to create high quality for print or presentation documents. However, Microsoft Word can be used for a lot of the same things. And matter of fact, in Word today, a lot of people will actually edit pictures in Word, basic editing like removing background, you know, changing the shape, lightening, darkening, that can all be done within Microsoft Word with the intent of editing the graphic you're gonna put into a Word document. However, um, what I teach my students is you go out, you're on a nice quality screen, you edit the picture, you use the snipping tool, which you can get to by hitting the Windows key, Shift and S, and snip and save it as back as a JPEG or back as a PNG and you have a new graphic. So something to keep in mind. <laughs> um, when we open the program, you know, we have some sort of control mechanism that allows us to do things like edit font, edit the paragraph and spacing. A lot of times styles, you'll see I'm down here on the ribbon, home, things we can insert like graphics and charts. Um, freehand drawing that we can do within documents now. What's our design? So as you can see, my PowerPoint has a real design concept that I try to implement on many screens to keep them consistent. Layout is it going to be portrait, which is you know vertical or horizontal, you know um, orientation. How are we laying that out, et cetera, all things we can do. So we've got Microsoft Word, we've got Google Docs, we've got Open Office Writer, and then of course, we have pages within uh, Mac. <clears throat> so personal professional uses. Notice here the templates we have. So this is me going into Microsoft Word. I'm saying new document. I can start with a blank document. I can take the tour, which is a document in, its, in itself of what things I can do with Word. But look at this like amazing restaurant brochure. I realize this is small to see. I probably should have made a bigger copy of one and I apologize but I can make brochures, I can make great cover letters, I've got default templates for resumes. Although folks, I suggest you really um, customize these default resume templates or yours is gonna end up looking like everyone else's. But I can do calendars, I can do posters, I can do brochures all within Microsoft Word now. So don't just limit your idea of Word because here, here's a great example. You know, we have the formatting to do things like bold, italic, underlined, subscript, superscript. We can use word art. We can highlight. We can uh, change font styles, font colors, font sizes. And by the way, if we click down here on the more button in the ribbon of Microsoft Word for font, we're gonna see that there are a ton more things we can do with just font. Okay, page orientation we talked about, you know, we can change margins, we can change the print page. So literally I can go to a standard card like greeting card stock and build my own greeting cards right within Word. There's a lot of people who take photos who use Word to create really nice professional um, greeting cards that they put in stores. Styles of documents, so the things to know with styles is that we have some standard styles which associates fonts, font sizes, and colors, and graphics together to create a consistent theme for the document. What a lot of professional companies, since we talked about professional, will do is that they will go ahead and actually create a theme style that is to be used by everyone in their company so that documents have the same font, the same font size, the same colors to match their corporate color schemes their corporate standards as it pertains to fonts so people don't get too creative or 
that every document coming out of that business has such a consistent look and feel that you know it's from that business. So an example would be Nike. Nike has <laughs> default themes, default templates, um, and even policies on what can and cannot be used. Many products, activity suites have built-in templates. I'm showing you some here. These are like posters. I know it may be a little bit difficult to see, but these are posters. Um, so I have all these different posters I can pick and just put in my text and my time and bing, bang, boom, I have a poster. I can change size and colors. It's just amazing what we can do within word processing today. So when we're managing documents, of course, we can save them locally. I've given you some examples of some cloud storage again, you know, with iCloud and Google Docs and Microsoft OneDrive and Dropbox. Again, these are places that we can store our data to the cloud. Now, when we store the data to the cloud, there inherently is a security issue. So I would just highly, highly suggest that whatever your password is into your cloud storage, that that be the maximum length with the maximum number of uppercase, lowercase, whatever the software developer will allow you to use, go ahead and use that. Use a password manager so you don't have to remember it. Yes, you can cache it on your computer, but you know, make sure it's something that you can log into easily from other computers and that some hacker is not gonna be able to log into as well. <laughs> Moving on to spreadsheets. So as we talk about spreadsheets, we usually think about numbers, okay? I'm gonna show you some examples here. So a worksheet is one sheet of numbers that pertain to some topic. When we put a bunch of worksheets together, we create a workbook. Let me give you an example. Work sheets. I could have a budget. A sheet could represent a month. A workbook could represent a year. A cell is a single instance of a value. This could be a textual value or a numerical value or a graphical value within the sheet. So when a lot of people think about spreadsheets, they start to get worried. They think, ah, oh, all we're gonna be talking about darn is those darn numbers and, and manipulating numbers and doing formulas and I was terrible at math. Well, that's why down here I've given you example of a spreadsheet that has been turned into what's called a Gantt chart. And a Gantt chart is the way for us to manage a project. So we can see that this project you know, so far is out to the fifth week, right? And these are the items that are gonna happen Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Here's what's gonna happen Wednesday. These two items are gonna happen in conjunction Wednesday, and then this is gonna take over. And these one, two, three, four items, as you can see, can happen consecutively with each other. But notice I did no math here. I did no formulas and functions, but I can still use a spreadsheet because it puts my data in easy to read columns. So we can format tools, layout, a lot of things we can do in Word. We'll see similar, a similar ribbon for things like font color and size and things and graphics. But here we do wanna talk about the fact that we also can do calculations. Folks, we have financial calculations, logical, textual calculations, true and false. You know, if this cell equals this, do something, or maybe just format it a different color so I can, so it'll stick out so I can see where there's challenges. I've got math trig and many more functions. And, and professional industries like engineering, they build modules that fit into Excel that add standard engineering functions and formulas. Okay, so formulas or a computation rule calculates values using cell references, numbers, and arithmetic operators. So a formula, we have some formulas that do a payment. So what we can do is give it the time we're gonna take the loan, how much the loan is, and the interest rate, and it'll tell us what a monthly payment is. So from here on out, once you learn Excel, there's no reason to go out and get a loan without clearly understanding how much interest the bank is charging you and how much money the bank is making on the loan. Um, when we get into details later on in the class and talk about Excel, I'm gonna make sure the payment function and the future value function are two functions that you know. A function is a predefined calculation, built-in custom functions. We can create those as well. We just give it an argument and it figures it out. Now, there's also absolute reference and relative reference. And an absolute reference 
is when we're using one cell with one value and we're referencing that in a calculation with many cells. This will make more sense when we get into the hands-on detail where a relative reference would be we're going to take um, column A and multiply it by column B and as we pull down on column B to get the results we want it to do row one as a calculation, row two as a calculation, row three as a calculation, not using a single absolute cell. Other things we can do within a spreadsheet are conditional formatting. So depending on the value in the cell, I can format it. In my classes, we do this when we create a budget. We say, all right, we have an actual amount and then a budgeted amount. And if my actual amount is over my budgeted amount, put it in red so I know, whoa, I was over my budget this month for that topic. Um, if it's green, that means I'm under my budget. I'd like to see green, but what I'd really like to see is yellow where my budgeted amount and my actual amount equal zero. The difference is zero, so we would do that. <laughs> a what-if analysis is... Normally, we use that for like goal seek. And let me give you an example of that real quick. So let's say I've done a payment function and I've said, okay, I'm going to put $100 a month at 5% interest for the next 10 years to save up money. And I find out that, wow, it only saves up $10,000 and I need 20. What I can do is I can have it recalculate based on a what if value. And the what if value might be what if the interest rate changes? What if I can change the time? Or what tends to happen is what if I change the payment, which means how much do I need to actually put in each month at that interest rate and that time to save 15000 instead of 10000 We can use things like trend lines, spark lines, and pivot tables. We won't get much into pivot tables here, but trend lines and spark lines give us a quick view of what's going on, what the trend is of that sheet compared to other sheets, compared to cells within that sheet. We can also create charts that represent the data, which is wonderful because it's easier to view a chart than it is to figure out big data. So we create these charts. Now, a lot of times, folks, what people will do is they'll take their very expensive accounting software and they will actually export data into Excel so that they can, in fact, create um, and use data and see it within charts or graphs. You know, here's a chart. Um, you know, we can do graphs. Again, pivot tables we won't get into. We can even do maps where we put like addresses on a map, if you will. Pretty amazing stuff. So that's it for part 2A. In part 2B, we'll finish off this presentation looking at presentation software, database software, and some great graphic software. Until then, take care.